We are now on task two of the getting started with IBM Engineering Requirements Management Doors Next Quick Start. Task two is examining the stakeholder requirements, and within this task, y'all will explore the Doors Next user interface. You'll see how requirements are organized in hierarchy, and they can be text, graphics, tables, and so on. You will see how to display relevant requirement information using columns and how to filter the display so that only the requirements you are concerned with are shown. Note that this project is under change control and so you will not be able to modify any of the requirements. And I'll get in, into that in just a few minutes here. What we want to do is scroll to the top of this module and look at 1.1 vision. Put your mouse over that, so that way it is highlighted in a pale yellow. Mouse over to the left of the 1.1, so your mouse is illuminating a darker yellow box that contains 1.1 with a down arrow. Click on that. That down arrow is a twisty, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to collapse and expand menus so you can see hierarchy in a very quick and easy way. Another way to check out hierarchy is let's head up to the top of the darker gray bar, mouse over the page icon. When you mouse over that, it says configure page settings. Click on configure page settings and you'll see a whole menu pop up. This menu is incredibly important and we will use it a lot. Then click on show full hierarchy and here is where we can change the hierarchy levels between one and four levels. And for example, we will click on show two levels. Now we can see what is affiliated with the top hierarchy of aviary UAV stakeholder requirements. Let's go expand everything again. And to do that, let's go up to the top of the configure page settings button again. That is to the left of ID and when you mouse over it, you will see it will form a darker yellow highlight. Click on that and click on show two levels, change it to show three levels. One thing that I wanna call out here is this graphic that is affiliated with ID 4067. You will see a purple box that says bird feeder, a red box that says hummingbird, and on the right side of the screen, bird watchers. When writing requirements, a sketch helps illustrate the meaning. In a traditional environment, users often have to turn to tools like PowerPoint or Visio. But the thing is that Doors Next allows these sketches to be created and modified right inside of the solution. There's no need to copy and paste from other tools. You can build these sketches directly inside of here. Another thing too is that any changes made regarding the sketch are recorded so that way you have full traceability. And we'll touch about that in just a little bit. One thing that I wanna talk about now is this ID column. As we scroll down here, we can see that each requirement, header, graphic has a different ID associated with it. It's unique. Each row is an atomic artifact that may be a requirement, a heading, a sketch, a graphic, and so on. With traditional document editing tools, multi-user collaboration is difficult and impossible to manage. But the thing is, is that it's not impossible to manage here. With Doors Next, many engineers can work on the same document at the same time. As a requirement is edited, it automatically locks and then automatically unlocks when the author is done. Alternatively, the module may be placed under change control, as this one is, and managing and documenting the impact of changes in a controlled way. We're gonna go back up to the top of the configure page settings button. That again is to the left of the ID column. Click on that. And we're gonna go down and click on artifact type. And it will take one second to add that column. It's going through the menu here. We can see that artifact type is populated and we have various artifact types available to us, which 
goes to the idea that Doors Next allows you to switch from a document style to a more spreadsheet style view by easily adding columns. These columns may display any attributes of the artifacts in the module, but may also display other useful information such as link test cases, work items, or designs. Let's add another column. To do that, go back up to the Configure Page Settings button, click on it, and since we don't want to add any of these predefined columns, click on More. It will pop up a new menu, and one thing that I want to note here is that this dialog shows a full list of any piece of information you can add as a column. Columns may be added, removed, and resized here. You can also manually resize columns in the module itself. The list of available information may be filtered by typing text into the filter field and or by selecting a specific type of artifact. In the case of traceability links, that column may be further customized to show attributes to the linked artifact. And I'll show you all that in just a little bit here. Let's search for an attribute. Click inside of the type to filter by attribute name search box that is located in the left hand middle of the screen. Put in the characters ACC. Click on accepted and then click add. We can now see that it is inside the list under columns to show. Here we can change the width in pixels. We can also change the organization of it by clicking on accepted. We can click on move up or move down. This will change the order that appears on the module screen. Click OK. It'll take just a second. We can see here that we now have the column accepted available to the right of the column artifact type. To show you all how to resize columns within this window here, mouse over artifact type and you will see two lines with two arrows appear. Click on that and you can use your mouse to drag the column wider or smaller. It's entirely up to you how you want to be visually configured. You can do that with any other column as well. For example, I will enlarge the contents column. Another thing about columns is that columns may be added for any attribute of the artifact, as well as traceability links. These may then be stored as custom views, allowing the engineer to quickly switch between different perspectives on a set of requirements. You all will see this later, but first, let's explore a little bit of the search and filter options available within Doors Next. Above the word contents, mouse over a funnel with a plus symbol. You'll see the words add filter appear. Click on that. A new window will pop up that says new filter, choose an attribute. Inside the type to filter box, we are going to type the word TYP. Here we can see a list of attributes that contain the letters TYP. Click on artifact type, and then we can see a bunch of modifiers to this attribute regarding artifact type. We can either use the type to filter box to sort out exactly what we want, or we can scroll down in this menu on the right and click on stakeholder requirement. Looking at the bottom of this window here, we have the options of close, add and close, and add. Close will close this window and nothing will be saved. Add and close will add this column and close the window. Add will simply add this column, but you will be able to add more columns without exiting this window. We're going to click on add and close we can see that we have our accepted column. Let's take a look at how to find a specific word available within these requirements. Click in the type to filter artifacts by text or by ID box. That is to the left of the button you previously clicked on to apply a filter. We're gonna type in the word mission and hit return. This is going to search and pull up all the requirements with the word mission inside of it. And to show you that, I'm just going to control F, type in mission, so that way everything is illuminated with the mission and we can see that Doors Next found the three cases with, with the word mission in it. Let's add a column for downstream traceability. To do that, 
go back over to the configure page settings button. That is the button to the left of my D. Click on it, go down to the bottom, click on more, search for SAT inside of the type to filter by attribute search field and click on satisfied by. Click add, click OK. And now we can see that we have a satisfied by column. Take a note here that since these are blue links, that is a rich hover, so we can mouse over them and see more information available. Let's go back to the page menu button. That is to the left of ID. Click back on more. Click on satisfied by that is over underneath columns to show and click format. We could have formatted in this step, but I wanted to show how you could go back and edit these columns. Underneath select an attribute to display, click on that drop down menu, click on accepted, then on, then below accepted, to the right of select an attribute to display, click on another drop down method, method and click on verification method. You'll need to scroll down to find that. We can see that we have three other options to add for select an attribute to, to display. But since this is just an example of showing linked data, as this is demonstration data and many of these available attributes of these linked requirements have not actually been populated with any data, we're just going to take a look at two of these attributes. Some other stuff that I want to call out here is how you can to display attributes as. You can change that to be labels and values or values only, and you can also uncheck or check the checkbox for show one attribute per line. It is by default it is selected to only show one attribute per line. It is entirely up to you. What you can also do is you can change it so that way you can trim words to fit, wrap words to show all, or hide link text. For this demonstration we don't want to modify any of that stuff so click on OK. And now doors next will populate the list of requirements downstream that have satisfied by links to these stakeholder requirements. The first time this view appears, it may take a few seconds to populate, so please don't worry if nothing appears to happen straight away, just wait a few moments. Taking a look at the satisfied column now, we now see the accepted and verification method attributes. One thing that I want to call out here is that traditionally, traceability is maintained in separate documents, such as spreadsheets. That's a super manual process that is prone to a lot of error and is very costly to maintain as it takes up so much time. It's also outdated as soon as the author clicks save. But here, traceability is added directly in Doors Next using the web browser. Traceability is often mandated in many industry standards. The IBM Engineering Lifecycle Management Platform removes the manual, time-consuming, effort-associated with demonstrating compliance to such standards. And as you've already seen, traceability and gap analysis reports are easily visible on the dashboards. Now, since we just spent all this time customizing this view, we're gonna to wanna to save this for later. To do that, bring your mouse over to the view pane. What views are is a window that when you're looking out of it, it's exactly what you want to see. And to save this view, all you need to do is click on the button that says Save as New View. That button is located to the right of the button that is located to the right of the search box that says Search Views. It looks like a page with a little clipboard and a plus. So click on that. Now we have the option to name this view. So we will name it Mission Requirements. We can change the type of the view here, whether we want it to be only available for us, that is a personal view, or with the team, that is a shared view. Another thing that you can do is you can have this view only available within this module that is 4014, Avery Stakeholder Requirements. We could do, have it be available to all modules of this type, that is Stakeholder Specification, or we can have it available to all modules. We can also have this be made a preferred view, Another thing that we can do is we can put in a description. So our description could be that this is 
require we could we could do requirements for a b airy mission it is a good habit to get into putting in the description so that way if say someone leaves the company you get switched to a different project or something else happens anybody can get up to speed very easily and very quickly finally click on ok we can see this green mission requirements view has now appeared in the left view pane to be able to switch to a different view all we need to do is simply click on it in the view pane to do that let's let's click on one dot artifact type and we can see a different view became available to us now let's click on two dot requirements attributes and now we have another view available to us. Say we want to get rid of a view altogether. All we need to do is simply click on the selected view. So we'll click on two dot requirements attributes and we can see that we are back to the main module now. Let's go take a look at how we can search artifacts throughout the entire project or just in this module. Bring your mouse up to the top right hand corner and we're going to take a look at the search artifacts box. That is below, Susan with her profile picture is near the gear icon for settings. Search artifacts will search for artifacts across the entire project and not in this module, but we just wanna take a look at artifacts within this module. So to do that, click on the glass. And when you mouse over, it says find slash go to. So click on that. And this little window will pop up that says module find. Under find what, we will put in the word mission, and we can look for forwards or backwards, wrap option, or we can replace it with something. Finally, click on find. You can see that the word mission is highlighted for us within this module. Click close. Now, let's go search for the word mission across the entire project. Click on the search artifacts box and you'll see this little window pop up that says quick search. Type in the word mission. You will see in real time all of the artifacts and stuff within this project that says mission. Since it's blue, we know that when we mouse over it, it can perform a rich hover. Take a note on this page that there is only one of 10 of 23 available to us. So to navigate to the next, all we need to do is click on next located over on the right side of the screen and to get back to where we were, we can click previous. Another thing that we can do is click on more options. We can change exactly what we would like to do. So we can look at modified on, modified by, where to search and artifact types. To get out of the search box, simply just click away from it and it will disappear. You've now completed the second task in the get started with IBM Engineering Requirements Management Doors Next Quick Start.